Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is most frequently asked questions answered by Dluba support team. Our regularly yeah, webinar that we present yeah, uh, approximately one times a month. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the Dluba website, the German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today and I will present the first part of the webinar and then I will hand over to Jürgen. Yeah, and Jürgen can introduce himself. Yes, thank you, Andreas. My name is Jürgen Teilmann. I am working for Dlubai Customer Support. This is where I answer your questions either via phone or via email. And I will be presenting the second part of today's webinar. Like every month, I have searched all of your customer requests from the last months. And so I found the most frequently asked questions and prepared the topics for today. And like Andreas said, I will be presenting the second part. And while Andreas will be presenting, I will answer your questions and vice versa. So that's all from my side for now. Back to Andreas. Okay, thank you, Jürgen. And also thank you for the hint that yeah, we will answer your questions or the, who of us answers the question when the other presents. Okay, then we switch off our webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. I say some words for the attendees who participate the first time. You can ask questions via the control panel. You can show it with that arrow and then you can enter your question here in this field. Yeah, the other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email your questions to info at global.com. Okay, then I turn to Afem and the first question is, the footer has changed significantly since one of the last updates of Afem 6. What do all the new symbols mean? Yeah, that's the new footer. I would like to introduce yeah, the parts of the footer. On the left side, yeah, these tools here are uh, tools for insert, uh, yeah, insertion and editing of guide objects. Yeah, for example, you can set a new clipping plane. You can activate a clipping plane, X, Y, and so on. This clipping plane and uh, this view, and so on. Then you can set a clipping box or set new object selections. So, and this part, these parts here are, for example, for, for measuring or, or neighbor for dimensions. You can add dimensions, yeah, just. Let create linear dimensions. So, for example, like this. So then I can switch it off. Then these uh, two tools are tools from. Uh, also for measuring, yeah, this is for measuring, for example, distance between two nodes, or here renumbering individually, automatically, and shift. So, and these tools are yeah, for drawing and modeling. For example, this one set center lines or these tools for, uh, yeah, you can trim or extend lines. You know, just let me try something. For example, I can click on two lines and in the middle of the two lines, a new line will be created. And you can also trim the line. 
for example, with this tool, two point. I select the line and start to point, it's okay. And I select, for example, this point of the column and now the line was trimmed. Or let me try another tool, for example, this one, create round corner with a radius of half a meter. Click on this line and then on this line. Okay, and now this is the corner is round. I can undo this. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that should be all for these parts. Those are for, for members then. You can uh, trim or extend a member. So, or can can divide member using distance and so on. Okay, then that's the auto modus or auto mode. So then you can display the grid. So I display the grid. And if you do a right click and press edit, you can yeah, edit the grid. Then, for example, this or this side of the footer is for settings for object snapping. You can, for example, activate a grid snap or activate object snap that's uh, yeah, activated by default. I can deactivate them uh, and so on. Okay, that should be all for the introduction of the footer. Uh, maybe this one by right click, you can edit the current coordinate system and you see the current coordinate system and you see the plane on this side here. Okay, that should be all to the footer. Yeah, just use these tools. Yeah, as more as you use them, I think as quickly uh, yeah, can you work. So that brings me directly to the second question, a much requested feature. The question is, how do I use the auto mode when modeling in RFM6? Yeah, that's the new button, auto mode. I can activate it or deactivate. Let me show an example for what you can use the auto mode. I edit the grid. I add more points and I change the space to 10 centimeters in both directions. Okay. So, and when you, for example, create a new line, it can happen that you not exactly create a line in the right direction when you want to use or create a line orthogonal. So I undo that. So, and I switch on the auto mode. And now you can only create a new line in orthogonal direction, yeah? Only in X direction or in Y direction. So for example, like this. Okay. A quite useful feature, yeah. almost or very often you want to create new lines in orthogonal direction. 
and it, this is this was a very often requested feature so then i turn to the next question and the next question is if i divide a member using a distance i always get two di divisions what is causing this let me show that what is meant uh, for example on this member Ooh, sorry on this member i can do that by right click members divide member by distance so and when i for example want to divide it by 25 percent of the length and i create a, a member or a node on member without dividing the member and i press apply yeah you can see that point here so and i leave the dialog with okay then you would get an error message i can show you what is meant i use that tool for example plausibility check and you see here coordinates of nodes number 168 and 169 are the same or too close and those two nodes are meant let me use another tool the model check identical nodes yeah, and you can see the identical node you can see what i did wrong better when I do it again, this time I use this function of the footer, the same function, divide member using distance. I select the member. Okay. So, and this time I divide the member, I leave that unchecked. So, and now I press apply. The member was divided, and when I press then OK, then it divides the member a second time, and that is wrong. You can only press apply, apply and then leave the dialog. Yeah, that's the mistake what is often made. Yeah, not you uh, must not press apply and then okay then the function will, uh, will be done two times okay i hope that could help you and yeah uh, that's all from my side and i hand over the screen for the next question questions to Jürgen. yes thank you andreas i will now share my screen so you can see the next model. And I start with the next question, which is saying, I can no longer change the numbering of individual elements. Some rows in the table are highlighted in pink and I can no longer delete them. What is the reason for that? So that you understand the meaning behind the question, I will start with a model which is not tidied up yet, meaning there are some materials in it not needed, some cross sections not needed, and therefore I will start cleaning up this model. I'm working with the table today, and since this is a pure reinforced concrete model, I don't need that construction steel here. So I go to material number one and hit delete to have the material deleted. Okay, now you see I have material number one, which doesn't have a material assigned, but I don't want that. I want the material numbering to start at one. So I go to this line and I want to delete it. But the button for this is grayed out and with control R, I also cannot remove this line. When I go out of the line, I see material number one is highlighted in pink. And that is a message from the program that you have some something wrongly defined. Uh, especially with this pink highlighting, it means that some other objects are 
um, seeking access to this object. So this means somewhere material number one was used when I deleted it. So I go on in my tables. I see sections. Definitions are fine. I go to thicknesses because previously I had some surfaces in this model. And you will see that thickness number two is in red. It's using material number one, and that's the mistake I've made because now with deleting material number one, I have corrupted my thickness number two. So, what I might do now is since I don't need this thickness anyway, I can delete it, maybe using this button for deleting the whole line. And when I go back to materials, you see the pink highlighting of material number one is gone. And therefore, I can remove this material. Or if I want to, I can move material number four up using, like Andreas showed before, our new footer. Go to shift using this load case from four to one. Do it again. This is not a load case, it's a material. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyway, I just delete that. Okay, uh, a second option would be if I'm not in that structure objects, but maybe in my load cases. Again, when I go to load combinations, here I'm using the automatic combination wizard which is creating my load combinations, but it started with combination number three, which is weird to me because I, as a user, want the combinations to start at one. But like in the previous case, you see combinations one and two are highlighted in pink, so they are blocked by some other object. Okay, so I'm looking for any objects which might utilize these load combinations. The first way to go for are the result combinations in this model. And there you see there is a result combination. I have created this previously by using manually defined load combinations. And when I decided not to use those manually created load combinations anymore, but to use rather the wizard for that, I have forgotten to delete that result combination as well. So that is a mistake I have made as a user. I will correct it by deleting this obsolete result combination. And when I go back to the load combinations, now you see these are not highlighted in pink anymore. So I can delete them and my load combinations will start at a numbering of one. Okay, so I have tidied up my model a bit and I will come to my next question, which I'm using the same model for. It's a question about reinforced concrete. And the question says, uh, the concrete design results show me a required longitudinal reinforcement for taking torsion. So this is when I calculate my concrete design. You can see in the in the results for the longitudinal reinforcement you can see a S required T, which is when I go to reinforcement on members, required reinforcement, longitudinal, you have that AS required T. And the question continues with, however, these results are zero in my case. Is there any setting I have done wrong or what is the problem here? So the, that question often occurs when people see that result and always get a zero longitudinal reinforcement required for taking the torsion. And the first thing I'd always 
would recommend you if you have a feeling your gut tells you there's some internal forces not considered that you go to concrete design or any other design add-on you're using going to the input data and edit the ultimate configurations because in those ultimate configurations you can see which internal forces are considered in the design so now i'm checking torsional moments are considered so that's okay first check is done that's good but still i don't know why this value is zero so i go to my required reinforcements on members as you all know when i go to the design ratios you can make a double click on any of these design checks to get to the details so what i'm doing now is i go to reinforcement on members there you can see the longitudinal reinforcement as required t and when i go to that particular reinforcement i may also make a double click to get to the design details for that i have design internal forces there's my torque i have that member number one i have the design check for the required longitudinal reinforcement on members for torsion and in that check we have a control equation so when I click on that, it's framed on the right side. You can see, okay, this is something from Eurocode. In our case, that's EN 1992-1-1. It's in chapter 632, sentence five. There is equation 6.31. And this equation handles the resistance, the shear resistance of the concrete against torque and against lateral forces so if this equation is lower than one then you don't need any longitudinal reinforcement for taking the the torque then in that case the stirrups are all you need for taking over the torque i will now modify my member by changing the material to some minor weaker concrete I do this in the member this is just some inferior material and when i calculate again you can now see there is an as required t of 4.28 square centimeters so i go to my reinforcement on members again you can see just that value that 4.28 and when i double click again to get to the details of that check then you will see that this control equation is now not fulfilled so a longitudinal reinforcement for taking over the torsion is required okay so that is a question based in the standard based in the euro code and now you know what that means okay now i'm coming to my next model the sixth question of the day which is something i will have to dig in a bit deeper the question says in one load case i use another load case as the initial state its results seem to disappear at the end of the calculation what am i doing wrong here so just to get you all on board with this question i have a i have a load case here which is still named the german fließgrenze this means this is the yield stress and this is beyond yield stress so there we have a plastic 
their formation. So you can learn a bit German in here. So I have a load case, which is giving my tension specimen I have here, a tension which is just giving a stress in uh, at the yield strength. Um, when you edit this line load I have here, I make this by a double click. In the comments, you can see that this line load is calculated so we reach exactly the yield strength of our material. Okay, another quick tip as we are in this dialogue now, there is an option of displaying loads on the opposite side. So this load is now not nicely rendered within the model. So if I go to display on opposite side, say OK, this load will get displayed on the outside of the model. OK, and now just to get to that question, I want to add another load case. I'm doing this here, which is a zero load. And I'm using that load case number one as my initial state. I say OK. So when I'm calculating my yield stress now, you can see that there's a deformation of 0.1 millimeters due to this tension. And when I calculate load case number three, which doesn't have any loads, but uses this initial deformation as an initial state. You don't get any deformation left. So this is just a, a misunderstanding of the concept of the initial state. So the best way for you to, to keep this in mind is that it's not initial load, it's initial state. So we start the calculation from a point where we have the tension on that specimen, but we converge to a state, to a load case, which doesn't have any loads. So this specimen, which has been loaded just within the limits of the linear elastic laws of physics, just gets back to zero load and zero deformation at the end of that load. To let you see the difference, I have this load case number two where I get beyond the yield stress. And also I will check my materials because that we get beyond our yield stress, we also need a plastic material so you can see the effects. And if you don't see these plastic materials, then that's because you have not activated your add-on for nonlinear materials. I go to the model base data and there we have the add-on for nonlinear material behavior. If you don't have that add-on activated, I'm sorry, then you cannot change the material to that type isotropic plastic. Okay, now I go to my load, display it on the opposite side again, just to make this look nice. So you can see this is a tension rod. Then I calculate my load case number two, so you can see the plastic deformation of this model. So you see from 0.1 millimeters to 8.2, that's rather a big difference. Now, when I go to my load case number three, and I change that from an initial state of yield stress to my plastic deformation, then you you can think of it you're you're starting from that load case beyond the yield stress limit where you have this 8.2 millimeters deformation and now you take away the load and the 0.1 millimeters of elastic deformations get back but the plastic deformation stays in place 
So that is a very good example in my eyes to explain the sense and logic behind the initial state. There are some other topics where you will need the initial state. So one thing are geotechnical analysis where you have a load history of the materials used in the soil. And the other ones are the form finding add-on where you need a load case of pre-stress to get a stable model or maybe a tensile membrane, membrane structures or some rope structures. Yeah, okay, that's for the initial state. And last but not least, I want to introduce you to a new employee of our company at Global Software. And the question why I want to introduce you to that new employee is, I have a short, simple question for the customer support. Previously, I used the chat for this, but where can I find it now? So the question comes from when you go to our website, and when you go to the bottom right, you can now see a small picture of a woman. I click on it. So this is now, I clean this up. So this is what you see when you click on that. If you don't have the small icon on the bottom right, then maybe you will need to accept the cookies from our website once more. So just delete cookies, go to global.com, accept all cookies, and then you will have the chance to get to this new um, AI assistant. I will change my language in the web page so you can all read this in English. This is our AI assistant. So our new employee called Mia is not a real person. She is a assistant based on artificial intelligence and she's here to answer all your short questions in short time. The Basic benefit is that she doesn't need sleep. She will be here 24 seven. So if you're at another part of the world, maybe in Brazil, maybe in Australia, so you don't have to bother with any working time of our German customer supporters. And now I will just type in a small and simple question. How can I reset my password in RFM6. And while you get this message, I'm looking into this. What, what Mia is doing, she's searching all web contents on global.com. May it be on the FAQs we have, may it be on the online manuals, may it be the knowledge base articles, previous webinars. Each and every content on the website will be searched by Mia, and you can see. She was quicker in finding the answer than I was in telling you what she's doing. Okay, now I read the steps to reset your password. You can follow these steps. Go to the website, that's where I am. Click on my account in the main menu. Under the login fields, click on reset password. So that's when I go to my account. This is up here. I find reset password. I click on that. So if you're worried now that Mia is gone, it's no problem to open her again by clicking on that symbol. Then I can enter my valid email address where a global account is assigned to. Then I follow the instructions, click on continue, and later on I will receive an email with further instructions for resetting my password. So as you can see, this took just a few seconds to get a valid and proper support from Mia. Yeah, so that's all from my side today. Thank you for your interest and now back to Andreas. Okay, Jürgen, <laughs> thank you for your presentation. I take over the screen again. Just a small hint, if you want to get your free online product demonstration, for example, just contact our sales team via that link, or you can also scan that QR code. Also, when you would like to get a non-binding offer, yeah, just contact our colleagues. 
So then I turn to the website that I can show you where you can find the recording and the files and so on, bluebuy.com. Yeah, before I do that, I would like to yeah, uh, invite you to the Digital Bau in Cologne next week. You can yeah, book your free product demonstration and you can ask for a free ticket. Yeah, just write us an email if you want to come to Cologne. Yeah, but, but at, uh, um, as I said, if you can't come to Cologne, you can contact our sales team as well for a free product demonstration. So then I turn to news and events and the webinars. Those are the webinars of the next weeks. Calculation of reinforced concrete slabs is the webinar of next week. Then connections with circular hollow sections that is in the week after next week. I will present that webinar. Then design of masonry structures and so on. Those are the webinars of the next weeks. So that's today's webinar. No, no, no. That's also the planned webinars uh, about the most frequently asked questions that we will present in March, April, May, June, June. And yeah, that's today's webinar. So I click on it. In the next days, you will get an email with a link that leads you directly to that page. Then you will find the recording in the middle here. And you can also find or already find the presentation slide here. And the models are here. OK. That's also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Jürgen for his part of the demonstration. Maybe a last wish when you leave the webinar, there's a small survey. You can score the webinar or you can or and you can enter yeah, wish for future webinars and so on. Uh, just note when you score the webinar, the worst score is one and the best score is five. Yeah, it would be very nice. Okay, that's also all from my side. I wish you a nice rest of the day and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.